Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency news. We're going to look at Starbucks accepting crypto. We're going to talk about Bitcoin hits $9,000. And we're going to learn talk about learning from the Chinese. So let's get into it. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. I'm not smarter than you. You are smarter than you realize. Do not trust what I say. Do your own research. So today we're talking about how real world use cases will drive crypto growth in 2020. And the first thing is about proving providence. Providence. Supply chain was one sector where blockchain appeared to have a lot to offer. Promising transparent proof of providence from factory to end consumer. And even though the guy in this article kind of says how it's not working and da 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 da, it actually is working. And I don't know why he took such a negative perspective on it. But the uh, IBM food chain network has been doing a tremendous amount of work in the area of tracking products from farmer to store shelf and here's an example of of, uh, just doing that with coffee but on the IBM Food Network site itself it actually talked about your holiday Christmas table uh, of the food that you were eating and they covered a whole bunch of different subjects that are being tracked from farm to grocery store shelf using the IBM Food Network blockchain And, and they're talking about items such as deviled eggs, roasted chicken, coffee, salmon, scallops, shrimp, green salad, mashed potatoes, pasta, and apple pie. And so I thought this was really interesting. The IBM Food Trust Network has been uh, around for about a year and a half, two years now, and they have uh, an, uh, an agreement with Walmart and Albertsons and Safeway, and so a lot of grocery stores are starting to require that their vendors Uh, use the IBM Food Trust Network in order to be able to track those products from the farmer all the way to the store shelf. And so I believe that this whole supply chain, blockchain uh, uh, deal is actually beginning to gain traction and gain some real world use. Another area that blockchain is gaining real-world use is gaming. Gaming is another example of a use case where blockchain is adding real value. In-game assets assets are big business with virtual goods market worth over $50 billion. So imagine that. People are playing games and they've got a digital suit of armor or a digital weapon or they've got other digital items that they would use inside of that game and these are just you know images they're graphics they're it's just a a piece of digital content and yet it's a 50 billion dollar a year market where people are buying those things and selling and trading them however without blockchain the assets themselves have no underlying value and under the control of the game developers and punch publishers non-fungible tokens in other words they are not alterable you have a permanent record of these tokens which is done on a crypto blockchain may well be set to transform the gaming sector enabling users to take full ownership of -of one-of-a-kind assets as pioneered by games like crypto kitties another use case is creating interest in interest Ever since the 2008 financial crisis, it's been virtually impossible to earn decent returns from good old-fashioned savings accounts. Now, interest-earning accounts for cryptocurrency are opening up new avenues of passive income that doesn't involve pure speculation on the volatile crypto markets or an active investment strategy. And then the last use case that they talked about is store of value. The original use case of Bitcoin was a store of value, and it remains one of the biggest growth deliver- drivers today. Over recent years and throughout the crypto winter, citizens in countries including Venezuela, Argentina, and Iran have turned to Bitcoin as a means of protecting their wealth from the effects of hyperinflation. Global or political events may also have impact on the appeal of cryptocurrencies as a store of value. And so that's 
that's all good news as far as the types of things that cryptocurrency and or its underlying technology known as blockchain are getting used for because the more they get used uh, the more it impacts the cryptocurrency market in a positive way. Another uh, subject of interest uh, for today is exclusive. Backed wants to lead the revolution with new ways to spend and accept crypto by launching at Starbucks. So, Backed, there has always been a lot of hype around Backed starting from the announcement that the company behind the New York Stock Exchange was teaming up with Starbucks and Microsoft to form a company completely revolving around crypto. Since their launch, they've even managed to exceed expectations, but they also had a lot in the works being built away from the spotlight. They'll be doing it with products intended for both sides of a transaction, my, my source explained. For the everyday person, there's going to be an app for iOS and Android. With this, they can buy select cryptocurrencies or use it as a wallet and simply deposit cryptocurrencies obtained elsewhere. But this wallet isn't going to be marketed as a storage like others. This wallet is where you put cryptocurrency you want to spend. So, with the wallet for the customer, next comes the merchant. The other half will be the merchant services. The goal here is for any business to be able to implement this without any learning curve. Any business that currently takes Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, their employees already know everything they need to know to implement the backed exchanges cryptocurrency application, but it'll they'll be spending cryptocurrency and not just using Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, which is always a fiat currency such as the U.S. dollar or the the fiat currency for their local country. You know, if you lived in the United Kingdom, then your Apple Pay is a United Kingdom uh, purchase or spend. So, and then the last thing I thought was quite interesting, possibly Back's biggest advantage is Starbucks. We'll be giving these products a massive jump start as the first business you'll be able to pay with crypto as at using the backed wallet. This isn't just a way to get a lot of people to download the wallet. It's a selling point that will convince a lot of merchants, as my source explained. Any merchant on the fence will be convinced when they hear Starbucks trusts the tech as there are thousands of locations. There will, there's always one nearby, so we can encourage the merchant to simply try it themselves. Once the merchant tries it themselves, they will see there's no good reason not to implement it in that merchant's store. Backed aims to have everything ready to go in the first half of 2020, followed by plans to roll out additional features like rewards that encourage continued usage and growth. South Korea is planning on a 20% tax on crypto gains. The government of South Korea is planning to charge a 20% capital gains tax on income from cryptocurrency transactions. Uh, also, Bitcoin hit $9,000, institutional cryptocurrency investment spikes, and an MBA team uses Ethereum. So per data from Coin360, Bitcoin gained 11% in, in one week, 11% in a single week. How many investments do people have out there that gain 11% in a single week? Now, I know that that's spectacular. It would be fantastic if Bitcoin continued 11% every week for the next 50 weeks, but time will tell. Um, relying as high as, rallying as high as $9,000 as buyers have stepped in mass, while already impressive in and of itself, what has been especially interesting is the performance of altcoins, which have largely outpaced Bitcoin for the first time in quite a while. Ethereum gained 22% surging to multi-month highs on the back of positive news and influx of buying pressure. Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, BSV, has surged 75%, and a majority of the other altcoins saw gains between 10% and 20%. So it was a great week for cryptocurrencies. Another point is Grayscale sees record inflow into Bitcoin and crypto products. Now, 
the vast majority of money flowing into Grayscale's, uh, and Grayscale has a funds, well, not just one, but they have multiple funds that you can buy from your stockbroker if you have a TD Ameritrade account or an E-Trade account or a TradeStation account or one of the many others out there where you're doing, you're buying and selling stocks online. Grayscale is a fund that you can purchase, but they found through their research that 80% of the people that are buying this Grayscale fund, 80% of the money is coming from institutions such as hedge funds or other uh, large organizations. And last year was such was the biggest year of uh, to date for Grayscale, but not only the biggest year, in one year, they did uh, more volume, more sales than they had in the previous five years. In a single year, they exceeded the totals for the previous five years. And so that just goes to show that institutions are beginning to wake up to cryptocurrency and they're purchasing cryptocurrency funds on the regular stock market. But there's also a lot of other evidence out there how institutions are investing billions of dollars into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies right now at this time. Uh, Coinbase, for example, has been uh, about nine months ago, and I haven't heard an update to this, but April of 2019, uh, Coinbase announced that they were seeing somewhere around one to two billion dollars invested from institutions into cryptocurrency through their business. And so uh, institutions are waking up to cryptocurrencies. Crypto giant Gemini launches insurance. They're now uh, providing insurance up to $200 million worth of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency that's stored with uh, the Gemini exchange. An ex-top financial regulator in the United States wants a digital dollar. This man is a ex-CFTC uh, head. He used to head the CFTC and he thinks that the United States needs a digital dollar. An NBA team, Sacramento Kings, is going to use Ethereum and they're going to promote a lot of products and make products, uh, you know, NBA related products, shirts, jerseys, etc., available for purchase using Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. And Twitter is talking about, there's a rumor out there, so this has not been verified by Twitter themselves. It's other rumor sources saying that Twitter is considering. Uh, allowing uh, Bitcoin as a tipping uh, mechanism. So you could tip other Twitter people, uh, other Twitter accounts with Bitcoin right through the Twitter application. At least that's what's being considered or rumored to being considered. So there's five major trends to watch in 2020 when it comes to cryptocurrency. The first major trend is going to be the Bitcoin halvening in 2020. The Bitcoin halvening coming up in May is a key aspect of the bull case for Bitcoin in 2020. This is scheduled. This is a scheduled occurrence that takes place roughly every four years where the number of new Bitcoins generated around every 10 minutes is cut in half. Instead of 12.5 Bitcoins being included as a subsidy for miners in every block, it'll drop to 6.25 Bitcoin uh, will now be generated. And so, in other words, the people who are miners of Bitcoin and they're the ones that secure the Bitcoin network and make the Bitcoin network function so that people can trade Bitcoin back and forth, today they are getting paid 12.5 Bitcoins for every block that's created. And after approximately May 20th, 2020, they're not sure on the exact date because it just depends on how quickly they generate the blocks. Um, that's going to drop to 6.25 from 12.5. And so they're going to get half as much as they used to get prior to that date. And so it, it drops like a stone on that exact date. It's not a gradual downturn where it goes you know, 12.5, 11.5, da, 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 but rather uh, one block, somebody got 12.5, the next block, they got 6.25. So whoever, whoever managed and handled getting that block added to the blockchain. Now that halvening is going to affect the price because it increases the scarcity of Bitcoin and makes it more scarce, especially when you look at it from a stock to flow ratio. Bitcoin transitioned to digital gold. 
Bitcoin has been referred to as digital gold for a number of years, but 2019 was the first year when the name became much more realistic. According to data from the last six months of the year, in fact, the idea of Bitcoin as digital gold became so prevalent in 2019 that U.S. Congressman Brad Sherman claimed the crypto asset may be a threat to the U.S. dollar's dominance in the global economy. Another area that's interesting as far as Bitcoin being a digital gold, when Bitcoin drops from 12.5 to 6.25 and you measure Bitcoin using a stock to flow ratio, just like they've used for decades, a stock to flow ratio to measure the scarcity of gold or silver, platinum, and other precious items, um, with the halvening, Bitcoin scarcity is coming close to the same scarcity of real gold. And so it's not, it'll still be slightly below the scarcity of gold using a stock to flow ratio comparison. So by the time we have the halvening in 2024, uh, Bitcoin will be more scarce than gold is when you measure it based on the new incoming supply of Bitcoin versus what's being mined by gold miners throughout the world compared to the existing supply of Bitcoin and or gold, depending on what you're measuring. So um, also another important area for 2020 is Bitcoin does not see serious upgrades happen very often and for good reason. That said, a major change could take place in 2020. So there's a whole bunch of projects that have been, been built over the last several years that could be released on the Bitcoin network in 2020. And the, the big thing about these three projects, Schnorr, Taproot, and TapScript, is it will introduce a language so that you can actually write your own apps and have those apps exchange or work on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. That's one of the things that has made Ethereum so popular and Ethereum such a powerhouse in the cryptocurrency industry is that currently Ethereum has, you have the ability to create smart contracts on Ethereum, whereas Bitcoin you cannot, or it's very difficult to do so. So when new cryptocurrencies have evolved out of Bitcoin, they did it by copying the Bitcoin code and starting a brand new network for that specific cryptocurrency. Whereas with Ethereum, because Ethereum has been using smart contracts, you can actually build a brand new cryptocurrency and have it transact using the Ethereum blockchain so you don't have to create your own uh, cryptocurrency network or blockchain network in order to introduce that cryptocurrency. And that's gonna allow people to create all kinds of new cryptocurrencies and run them on the Bitcoin network as well as all kinds of other applications such as uh, applications that do finance or applications that are doing, um, you know, from farm to store, from farm to store shelf type, type uh, supply chain relationships. All of that could start become being built on Bitcoin, which previously without these upgrades were not possible. The Lightning Network and Liquid Sidechain Adoption. So while these would be in addition to the existing uh, uh, code and software that runs the Bitcoin network, Lightning is something that runs outside of the Bitcoin network and then transfers information to the Bitcoin network. In other words, with the Lightning Network, you could go out and it could be used for merchants to buy and sell goods. And when you buy or sell something, you're paying for it with Bitcoin, but it's done only on the Lightning Network. And then after the transaction is made, the Lightning Network would go to the Bitcoin Network and add it to the network. And so this is a software program that resides outside of the Bitcoin Network, whereas these were software programs that will reside inside of the Bitcoin network. So very similar things, a little slightly different, but those are things that are coming out in 2020 and uh, should have a big impact on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market. And then the last thing that this article talked about was institutional money. And of course, the final Bitcoin trend to watch in 2020 is adoption by institutional investors. 
So forget about the happening. Could this be what sends Bitcoin over $10,000? And so what they were talking about here is the powerful foundational technologies that will bring novel smart contracts to Bitcoin's base layer uh, said 2020 will be good. Meanwhile, a survey by Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news and analysis site, the block found that the coming upgrade is being closely followed by the Bitcoin community with some high profile Bitcoin developers predicting it will make transactions cheaper and enable the development of new features such as the somewhat controversial Lightning Network. And so this is another article pointing to the upgrades we just talked about um, as far as a reason for the Bitcoin price to go up significantly. And, you know, one of the things people have noticed that I talk a lot about Bitcoin, but there's only one reason why I do it. And that's because uh, about 70% of the total money or total value in all cryptocurrencies, all cryptocurrencies is in Bitcoin. And when you look at the price charts, when Bitcoin goes up, it, all of the other cryptocurrencies, and I shouldn't say 100%, but a lot of them tend to follow Bitcoin's price. When Bitcoin goes up, the majority of the other cryptocurrencies go up. When Bitcoin goes down, the majority of other cryptocurrencies go down. And so if you want to have an idea of what the cryptocurrency market as a whole is doing financially, and then it's real easy just to follow Bitcoin's price and then whatever specific cryptocurrencies that you personally have an interest in, of course, you can take a look at those as well. So, uh, Facebook's Libra cryptocurrency is no closer to release. People, you know, Facebook came out and said that Libra was going to happen in the first quarter of 2020, and it sounds like there's a major delay in Facebook launching Libra's cryptocurrency. Starts 2020 looking no closer to release with authorities in, the, in its base, Switzerland, raising fresh questions about its suitability as a global currency. Swiss finance minister uh, Yuli Moer, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, said on December 27th in Bern that the country can't not approve Libra in its current form, telegraphing to Facebook that the product it wants to launch in Geneva isn't going to get a green light from regulators anytime soon. SEC's Crypto Mom wants us to learn from Chinese digital in in innovation. And so this is quite interesting because here you have a, an official person for the Securities and Exchange Commission. She is saying that we should learn from China. So China outpacing U.S. in digital currency. Last fall, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, congressional testimony on Facebook's Libra leaned heavily on the idea of U.S. innovation falling behind. Now China's central bank, which just printed a second edition manual on digital currencies for Chinese officials, will soon launch a state-backed cryptocurrency that has the public sector leaders like Pierce taking notice. A lot of innovation is happening in China. I think that the government is recognizing the potential as something we should learn from. And so with um, Hester Pierce coming out in a public way, and she is a member of the securities and well, she's the securities and uh, one of the securities and exchange commissioners, Hester Price is coming out and saying that the U.S. needs to take notice and learn from China when it comes to cryptocurrencies, especially since China is coming out with a government-backed cryptocurrency that's going to be launched by the Chinese central bank. Uh, that should get the attention of the United States government to rethink some of the positions that they've been taking with cryptocurrency and with China coming out with their own cryptocurrency, in my opinion, I think that's a very positive thing for the entire cryptocurrency market because it gets the attention of, of virtually everybody worldwide and uh, will have people jumping on board of other cryptocurrencies, not just the Chinese cryptocurrency. I don't, I don't envision US citizens using the Chinese cryptocurrency, but hearing that China is releasing their own cryptocurrency, I can envision 
uh, people in the United States or in other countries going, hmm, if China's releasing a cryptocurrency, maybe I should learn more about Bitcoin or the cryptocurrency market uh, or one of the altcoins such as Ethereum, etc. And so overall, uh, I think it has it could have a positive effect on the cryptocurrency market and the cryptocurrency industry. So in conclusion, how can I be of service to you? Did I say anything that I didn't go in depth enough and you'd like me to describe it more? Do you have any questions about what I've said? Do you even disagree with what I've said? Look, you're, you're smart. You know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And when the two of us get together, we can learn from each other and we can grow smarter together. So share what you've got, especially if you disagree. I'm interested in your polite disagreements and we can grow together. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl and have a fantastic day.